A man in his natural perfection is fierce, hardy, strong in opinion, covetous of glory, desirous of knowledge, appetizing by generation to bring forth his semblance. The good nature of a woman is to be mild, timorous, tractable, benign, of sure remembrance, and shamefast. These gender categories remain firm and true throughout the age. As we learned from Chaucer, women really want control. It's probably because they had none. I got the eye of the tide and the fire Dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar Louder, louder than the... So, women were generally viewed as a less perfect version of men. Um, this author, Helkia Crook, in 1615, um, wrote that he believed women were actually incomplete men. Um, and he says, quote, a woman is so much less perfect than a man, yet this imperfection is turned into perfection because without the woman, mankind could not have been perfected by the perfecter sex. It was very much expected of women to just settle down, get married with a respectable young gentleman, and have the babies. That's why it was such so strange for people like Queen Elizabeth to not get married, to not have children, to be the virgin queen, and focus more on her country, her career, and her life, rather than a family. And also, women weren't allowed on stage, so you got little boys playing the parts of women, and it just got kind of weird. Just saying. Masculinity is a theme that is throughout many forms of literature, but is most prominent in the work of Beowulf by Poet Unknown. In Beowulf, there's a strong code of what it means to be a warrior. A lot of this has to do with taking action rather than expressing your feelings. In Beowulf, it says, it is always better to avenge dear ones than to indulge in mourning. For every one of us, living in this world means waiting for our end. Let whoever can win glory do so before his death. When a warrior is gone, that will be his best and only for a full work. One aspect of masculinity described in Beowulf is known as comitatus. Comitatus is like a contract between a leader and his warriors. So pretty much he would distribute all the gold and royalties as long as his men were loyal to him and they had a contract where they would spend time with each other and enjoy entertainment and die for each other. How manly. During the Renaissance, a man's beard was a sign of his masculinity and was fairly effeminate with tights and uh, skirts and uh, fancy clothes, but um, they distinguish themselves from women by their beards. So here to talk about manliness and beards, we have Drew Sutherland. Drew Sutherland. Awesome, no relation to Keith Sutherland? He's my dad. Really? Yeah. And you go to Rick? Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So, clearly you have awesome facial hair, Thanks. rocking it. How do you feel when you have your beard on? See, when I shave, I feel like I'm 12. You feel like you're 12? 12. Okay. Very young. Very young. Feel older? Feel older? Yes. Do you feel like the ladies look at you more? I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no? Cool. Do you have any questions? Um, do, you, do you feel like people treat you differently when you have a beard and when you don't have a beard? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I do have the urge to just do that, I'm not gonna lie. I, like how women thing. like puppies, women like facial hair. It's about the same thing, yeah, I've been told. Awesome. Do you feel more confident with the beard? Sure, yeah. Here I am with Shane. Um, Shane, tell me about your experience with beards in your life. Um, 
Not a lot. Uh, I don't. I only have to shave about once a week to keep a clean face. Do you feel like your inability to grow a beard uh, decreases your sense of being manly? No, I no. don't, because I keep in touch with those beards around me, such as Drew's. Oh wow! I thoroughly enjoy yeah. Drew's beard, and I live vicariously through his. <laughs> Um, do you think that society would treat you differently if you had a beard? I don't think so. Because you see a lot of really important businessmen who are required to be clean shaved. Hmm. So I think two different things. I don't know. It's, it can be an advantage. Of course. Mm -hmm. Could be. Yes. So here we have that person <laughs> with his awesome facial hair like that even goes on his neck. What? Superman right there. So, how do you feel when you have a full beard going? Well, um, based on comments from everyone, um, you kind of do feel like a superman compared to someone who doesn't. Cool. And uh, a lot of guys especially tell me they wish they, they could grow a beard like me. And uh, they kind of feel wimpy. <laughs> Do you feel like people treat you differently if you don't have a beard versus when you do? Like, well, like once, shaving? once uh, I did shave, shave my beard fully, which I don't often do, and people were very uh, confused. <laughs> <laughs> did they mourn a loss of a great veteran? <laughs> Something like that. They were like, don't have to do that again. <laughs> you just look weird without it. That's what they said. Cool. How do you feel about guys with facial hair? Personally, I absolutely hate when guys have any facial hair. Because when I kiss them, I don't want to feel that pokiness in their face. Yeah, it's painful and it's not cute. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> William Shakespeare often played with the boundaries um, between gender roles. So for example, in his comedies, Much Ado About Nothing and Twelfth Night, the characters Rosalind and Viola are cross-dressing while they woo their prospective husbands. So they embody the traits of femininity and masculinity that were attractive to Renaissance men at the time. And they don't use their power, their masculinity, to usurp their men, but rather to woo them, and then once they settle down and get married, they take their place in the hierarchy. It was strange that they were women dressing as men, because during the Renaissance, um, it was feared that if a woman wore men's clothing, she would become a man and usurp the real men. During the Renaissance period, it was actually very common for men to have relationships with other men. It was actually common because women were only seen valuable if they were virgins. So in order for men to satisfy their sexual urges, they would have relations with other men. As a matter of fact, this wasn't called homosexuality, it was just the norm. Sodomy was a term used for any sort of sexual act that, had, that wouldn't produce any child. So masturbation, anal, oral sex between, you know, heterosexual couples and homosexual couples was considered sodomy. And even though it was seen as a sin, it was pretty much the norm and just kept on the down low. It was a time when women were viewed solely for their virginity and their chastity. It was a giant bargaining power in marriage dowries for the woman to be a virgin. So men who would settle down, usually at the age of 29, when they've been financially sound in their careers, would look for a bride who was a virgin. So it was very much prohibited for men to have sex with women unless they were married. So during a man's sexual prime, they would have, they would engage in sexual acts with other men. In Marie de France's Isclavet, the character of the werewolf is a metaphor for homosexuality because it is the duality of the character. Though he is married to a noble woman, he does leave her to change into a world in three days. He seems to have a homoerotic relationship with his knight, who, after he goes hunting and finds the beast, takes him in a, as his own. When, in the end of the story, the bisclavet turns back into the man 
They are seen to longingly hug and hold each other in happiness and joy. There you have it, folks. A little preview and how gender was viewed during the Renaissance. Hope you're all a little bit smarter now. living in this world for, means waiting for <laughs> okay Cut though we didn't encounter a lot of works in our class that had homosexuality in them one that stands out is the bisclovet bis bis so being a lady back then was tough work men were in control of everything and it was sometimes hard to know what you really want <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Homosexuality is an umbre umbrella term. Any sort of sexual act, so we not sodomy shit. All right. <laughs> In many of Shakespeare's plays, he, uh, good thing it. In a world. In a world where women are valued for their virginity and chastity, it was very common for men who would have who'd have sex. With 